so far within the scope of genome scale metabolic modeling we have talked about SPML structures we talked about cobra toolbox we talked about gpr rules gene protein reaction rules uh, that are required to construct a, a genome scale metabolic model and then we have used one yeast genome scale metabolic network, its SPML file, to run FBA uh, using a genome scale metabolic model. So we have already learned a couple of constraint based uh, metabolic modeling approaches. The most popular constraint based modeling approach is FBA. You have already applied FBA to a number of small scale metabolic networks and recently to a genome metabolic model. And we said that FBA should always be complemented by either FBA. So you are already familiar with flux variable to analysis too. Or to minimize the alternate optima here, uh, you should do a secondary optimization uh, to minimize uh, enzyme production. And for this, you can use uh, minimization of sum of squares of fluxes or minimization of absolute sum of fluxes, which corresponds to uh, the approach called parsimonious FBA, or we can minimize number of uh, active reactions. So those are the methods we have learned so far. Flux balanced analysis, flux variable analysis, and enzyme minimization, either by using quadratic programming, or you can uh, also uh, implement it by using linear programming if you use uh, minimization of absolute sum of fluxes. Today, we will learn a couple of other constraint-based analysis methods. It all starts with the question how to simulate metabolic fluxes of deficient organisms. If this is a microorganism, uh, so we are talking about a gene knockout. So a gene, a specific gene of the organism was knocked out. So can you simulate, uh, or how, how can you simulate the growth behavior of this microorganism? The most common objective function we use in microorganisms is the maximization of growth, right? Can we still use maximization of growth as an objective function for deficient organisms? Or if this is a um, mammalian cell or plant cell, uh, can we use still the objective function of the healthy organism uh, to simulate the flux profile of the deficient organism. So that's the question. And here I will talk about three alternatives. Of course, the standard alternative for simulating a gene knockout is that you can set the flux of the knocked out gene to zero. So that knocked out gene G1 is catalyzing a specific reaction, A goes to B. If this gene is knocked out, this means that the corresponding reaction will not take place because the gene will not be able to make the necessary enzyme for this reaction. So you need to set the rate of this reaction to zero in your constraint-based model. Right. Then you should choose an objective function to predict 
the fluxes of the knockout strain and uh, as we have just said maximization of growth is the most common objective function we use so in this alternative after you set the flux of knocked out gene the corresponding reaction to zero you can just choose the same objective function that you use for the wild type for the healthy organism in this case for example you can maximize growth right but now i will talk about two more approaches and they have shown they have proved that they are better in terms of predicting flux profiles of deficient organisms So one of such methods is known as minimization of metabolic adjustment or shortly MoMA. And the other is known as room regulatory on off minimization. Both studies were published in the um, in journal PNAS, a very well, a very, a very good journal and uh, they were cited so far um, in a high number of times. So, both approach, MoMA and ROOM, they say that the goal, the objective of the deficient organism is different. It's not maximizing growth anymore or if the wild type or healthy organism has a different uh, objective function. So in the case of brain metabolism, for example, we use maximization of glutamine, glutamate, GABA exchange between neuron and astrocyte cells. So we use this objective function to simulate the resting state, healthy behavior of uh, brain metabolism. So, MoMA and ROOM, they say that for the perturbed cells, you cannot use the original healthy case or wild type objective function. And they say that the deficient organisms or the perturbed cells, rather than maximizing growth, for example, they try to minimize the deviation from their wild type or healthy state flux. Let me repeat. They try to minimize the deviation from the wild type flux. So both MoMA and ROOM, they are based on this principle. Just the way they, they implement it, the mathematical way of implementing is different. So I will first talk about MoMA. <clears throat> MoMA, minimization of metabolic adjustment, is a method, a constraint-based analysis method, to predict fluxes of deficient organisms or perturbed cells. Here is the logic behind. It is a burden for the cell to change its enzyme amounts, right? So because the cell is already, uh, it has optimized its enzyme production in a given state. So it already produces certain enzymes in a certain amount, other enzymes in a, for example, lower amount, the other enzymes in a higher amount. So the idea behind MoMA is the cell will not prefer to deviate too much from this existing enzyme production profile. So perturbed cells will try to minimize their readjustment in the enzyme production profiles. 
if possible they will still try to have the same enzyme production levels for the corresponding enzymes uh, as they had for the wild type or healthy case. Another way of um, telling the same thing, perturbed cells will try to be as close as possible to the wild type or healthy flux distribution rather than maximizing their growth. Because maximizing growth means uh, probably uh, many of the fluxes will change. Since fluxes are correlated with the enzymes, this means uh, they have to update, they have to readjust their uh, already available enzyme levels. So rather than this, they will try to be as close as possible to the wild type uh, or healthy, in case of mammalian cells, flux distribution. So they will show minimal deviation from the a uh, wild type or healthy flux distribution. This will be their objective function. Minimal deviation from the wild type or healthy flux distribution. So objective function is either minimization or maximization. So in this case, they will minimize the deviation from the wild type flux distribution. So if we represent wild type or healthy growth uh, with this point, let's say you have already applied FBA. Let's say this is a microorganism, so you have safely used growth maximization as the objective function. And this state, this point represents the FBA-based flux distribution for the healthy for the wild type case. For the knockout strain, where you have set the corresponding knocked out uh, reaction, the gene that controls no, uh, the, the reaction that is controlled by the knocked out gene to zero flux. Let's say if you do growth maximization for this case too, then this is the flux distribution. So MoMA says that the flux distribution indeed for the perturbed cells we exhibit minimal deviation from the white type flux. So rather than trying to maximize the growth and be here, they will try to have this flux distribution. Let me uh, give you a graphical representation of uh, uh, this MoMA approach. This figure is from the original publication from 2002. And this is just a very simple example where there are only two fluxes, V1 and V2, in the system. So in this two-dimensional representation, this is the solution space for wild type, feasible space for wild type. And this is the objective function of, let's say, maximizing growth. this one. So, if this slope is the objective function, and if this is the boundaries of our solution space, then this is the point which corresponds to the wild type uh, optimal solution vector, right? This is V1, or V2, this is V1 value, 
So this is the optimal solution. When we knock out a certain gene, the corresponding reaction rate will be zero. This means that you put an extra constraint to the solution space, right? So the available solution space will shrink. It will be smaller because you introduce a, a, an additional constraint. So let's assume that this is the new solution space for the knocked out state, knocked out organism. If you use the same objective function, so this was the objective function. If you use the same objective function for the solution space of uh, the knocked out organism, so it will say have exactly the same slope, and this will be the optimum point based on, again, maximization of growth if you use exactly the same objective function. So MoMA says that rather than this point, the perturbed cells, the knocked out, uh, will try to minimize the distance uh, to their wild type flux distribution. So this was the wild type flux distribution. And the minimal distance to this point, which is still uh, within the solution space of the knockout organism, is if you just uh, take a perpendicular uh, line to the solution space of uh, the knocked out organism. So rather than this one, which is longer, so which means the cell needs to make more adjustment in terms of the fluxes, so fluxes are a little bit more different than the original one, they will try to minimize their distance to the wild type flux distribution and they will choose this uh, point as their flux distribution. So in this case, this doesn't correspond to maximal growth. Uh, but now I will show some results from their papers. They have shown that MoMA-based predicted fluxes for the knockout organisms are shown to be better than FBA-based fluxes. So now let's talk a little bit about the mathematical formulation. If you check this shape, so we have two vectors here, and we try to minimize the distance between, right? The distance between two vectors are commonly defined as Euclidean distance. And this is the formula for Euclidean distance. Here, W is the wild type flux distribution. So we already know this. Either we predicted it with FBA by growth maximization, for example, or uh, those fluxes were experimentally measured by using 13C carbon labeling experiments. So we have a known W vector, wild type flux distribution. We want to predict X, which is the mutant flux distribution and not unknown, not known. We want to predict X such that its distance to W vector will be minimal. So the objective function in MoMA is the minimization of the 
Euclidean distance between the two vectors. We want to find an x vector such that the distance to w vector will be minimal. The Euclidean distance to the w vector will be minimal. So, let's dig a little bit into this objective function. If you have an objective function to be minimized, it doesn't make any difference if you minimize its square root or if you minimize itself. Because if the square root of, of Square, square root of that function is minimal, itself will also be minimal, right? Or if you maximize it, if this has a very maximum, at, at the uh, maximum possible level, uh, the non-squared version will also be maximal. So we can write the objective function without using this square root uh, uh, there. And if we open up this part, this is the objective function that we want to minimize with MoMA. To minimize the, the distance between known wild type flux vector and the flux vector of the mutant or the knockout or the perturbed cell uh, that is not known yet. And here we have three terms. We know W, so WI square is known. So this is like minimizing a function with unknowns. So this X is unknown, XI square is unknown. So this is the function plus a constant. Again, minimizing a function plus a constant is equivalent to Minimizing the function itself. If the function is having its minimal value, the function plus C will also be minimal because C is just a constant. It won't affect the optimization algorithm. Therefore, you can skip this term from the objective function. And you can rewrite the objective function like this. An objective function with a summation term. If I write this in open form, this will be the objective function. So I will have those terms from 1 to n. And I will have this term then I will have this term so the open form of this squared term here those coefficients are known, right? Because I know the W vector. So these are known coefficients, all of those. So if I look at this objective function, here I have linear terms, right? And here I have quadratic terms. In other words, this part in my objective function I can represent as an f, right? So f in a linear uh, objective function represents the coefficients of 
the linear terms in the objective function. So f will be something like minus 2w1, minus 2w2, minus 2w3, etc. Or shortly, it will be minus 2w vector, right? You multiply the uh, w vector with minus 2. And this part is quadratic term. So you will represent it with an H matrix, or if it is Groby, I think Groby used Q, which is a binary matrix with diagonals being one. So by using those H and F uh, variables, well, not variables actually, the H and F, H matrix and F vector, you can minimize the distance between wild type flux distribution and the flux distribution of the perturbed cell. So you can apply MoMA approach. I will first show a very small, a, an example of a toy metabolic network from the room paper, which compared uh, MoMA versus uh, room over this toy metabolic network. So let's say we have this metabolic network. So A goes to B, right? And 2B goes to C plus byproduct. A goes to B, B goes to C plus byproduct, C goes to E, and E is secreted outside. And byproduct is secreted outside to this BYP. And there's one input of 10 units of A. So if you maximize the production of E, for example, so this if this is 10, this will also be 10, right? And since 2B is converted to 1C, 10B will be converted to 5C, right? The rate of this reaction will be 5. And the rate of this reaction is 5. This is 0. Sorry, this is 5, 2. These are 0. Let's say this is the wild type flux distribution that you have predicted. Okay, so this is wild type flux distribution. Here there are alternative roads, or this one, and this road is inactive, this road is inactive, and this upper road is active. So flux goes in a linear way like this. And let's say now for this toy organism, this flux or the gene that, that controls this reaction was knocked out, which means that its rate will be zero from now on because the uh, related enzyme is not there. If you apply MoMA for this, sample, uh, th this problem, MoMA will try to minimize the Euclidean distance to the original problem. And the behavior you observe with the Euclidean distance minimization is that since Euclidean distance doesn't force any specific reaction rate to a value, rather it minimizes the sum of uh, square differences between the two fluxes, You will see, for example, that uh, this rate is now around 9. Some part of it goes here. Of course, since this was 5, the Euclidean distance minimization will try to not to change this rate too much. So, but on the other hand, the flux cannot go in this direction anymore because this path is blocked. So it needs to choose one of the lower paths, 
and you get such a flux distribution. I will come back to that toy example again when I talk uh, about room, the other approach to predict fluxes of perturbed cells. But now I want to share some results from the original MoMA paper that compares uh, MoMA-based flux prediction versus FBA or growth maximization based uh, flux prediction for mutant strains. So this is a figure from the original paper. Here, uh, for two different conditions, these are carbon limited experiments, and I think these values shows the uh, it should be the dilution rate of the experiments, I'm not sure. But what here is shown is that x-axis shows the experimentally measured fluxes. So 13C labeling experiments were used to measure intracellular fluxes of about 20-30 um, reactions. And y-axis shows the predicted fluxes. Here, for example, so these are the measured fluxes. These are the predicted fluxes by using uh, FBA for the white type. So as you see, and this is, uh, by the way, PYK, uh, pyrate kinase knockout. Trains. But here there is no knockout. This is wild type flux. As you see, a growth maximization based wild type flux prediction is nicely correlating with the experimental fluxes, both for this case and this case. They have also measured the fluxes of the similar reactions, about 20, 30 reactions for the knockout organism where this PYK gene is not there anymore. So the corresponding reaction is set to zero. If you apply growth maximization for the prediction, again, this is experimental values. These are the predicted values. FBA based, growth maximization based uh, flux prediction does not lead to a good um, correlation, right? As you see here, there was such a nice correlation here and it's not there anymore. And when they used MoMA approach to predict the fluxes of this knockout strain, as you see, the correlation was much better compared to the uh, FBA based solution. Here, there are actually two ways to compare if your prediction is good or not. One is, as shown here, you can look at the correlation between the predicted and experimental intracellular fluxes if you have 13C-based experimental intracellular flux measurements. Or you can compare the predicted versus experimental growth rate values, right? That's another comparison. So in this case, they have made the comparison based on the intracellular fluxes. They have also given the correlation values in a table in their work. So for the uh, wild type case of both conditions, the correlation is very high and the p-value of the correlation is very, very low, as you see. So there is a very good correlation between predicted and experimental fluxes. This, in a way, validates the choice of growth maximization as objective function. For the FBA, or growth maximization of knockout strain here, the correlation is almost zero, as you see and the p-value is 0 0.6, so insignificant correlation. And when they switch to MoMA, 
correlation is much better with a significant p-value. And for the other condition, again, we see that FBA-based correlation is not that bad compared to this one, but it is lower than white type. And again, if you apply MoMA, it, will, it gives a higher correlation and a better significance. 